The greatness of Pink Floyd is not to be questioned. It is not to be uh, disputed. We all recognize the greatness of Pink Floyd. And, And not for nothing, I've reacted to one live performance of Pink Floyd. And it was by far, I think I titled it one of the most, I think I said, I think I called it the most mesmerizing uh, live performance I think I've ever seen. And it really was. Um, I don't know, was it Time? Was that the song that I reacted to live? I, for, I forgot exactly which song I reacted to, but... Um, yeah, I would love to react to some more Pink Floyd live um, is the point that I was trying to get to. And um, so y'all y'all request and recommend some. I, I really want to see some more of their live performances. Clearly, um, the level of creativity that they put in the studio and into the music they put into their live performances. And I, I would just love to see more of it because that one performance I saw was incredible. Um, but anyway... Today, the great gig in the sky. And I remember hearing this song in School of Rock. Y'all know that's the movie that I refer to a lot. I remember, um, I forgot which kid, he was handing out homework. And the homework was to listen to music. And he was handing out CDs. And he gave one of them Pink Floyd and said, listen to the great gig in the sky. And I don't know if it was the guitar solo or the or the keyboard. It's a solo one here that's incredible that Jack Black told one of the kids to listen to. So I'm really excited to hear it. And, um, you know, when it comes to Pink Floyd, we're not surprised by anything anymore. We we just enjoy the magic of their music and keep rolling. So we're not going to drag out this, this intro. We're about to go ahead and jump straight into this. So let's go. Excuse me? Who the hell is that?
I'm sorry. I gotta find out who this is. I'm sorry. I, 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 um, I, I, I can't. I can't rest until I find out who this is. Claire Tory. I've never heard of. Oh, no. She sued Pink Floyd for this. For songwriting royalties. Damn, that sucks. I shouldn't have looked this up. Now I'm sad. She is incredible. And the fact that it's an instrumental. It's not even... There's no words. She just she 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 she's she just screaming her heart out. Once again, this is another one of them songs where I felt like you people in the seventies was listening to this high. You couldn't listen to this sober. You had to be off one. On whatever you smoke, whatever you do, but you were not in a conscious state listening to this. This is something you drift off to. This is incredible. Do y'all hear this lady? This is incredible. So that answered my question on the instrument that it was referring to in the movie. It definitely was all about the piano. I mean, between Claire's vocals and that guitar, that was one of the most beautiful things I think I've ever heard in my life. It almost gave me like chills. It's the fifth track on the dark side of the moon. Song features music by keyboard player Richard Wright and wordless vocals by session singer Claire Torrey. The band began casting around for a singer, and studio engineer Alan Parsons suggested Claire Torrey, a 25-year-old songwriter and session vocalist he had worked with on a Top of the Pops covers album. Torrey was contacted to arrange a session for the same evening, but she had other commitments, including tickets to see Chuck Berry, 
So a three-hour session was scheduled for the following Sunday. That's hilarious. The band played the instrumental track to Tori and asked her to improvise a vocal. At first, she struggled to find what was needed, but then she was inspired to sing as if she were an instrument herself. That is exactly what she sounded like. She sounded like a part of the song and not vocally. She sounded like an instrument. It, and I, I, I can't I can't think of an instrument to compare her voice to, but that's exactly what it was. She was just it, again, it, it sounded like an instrumental and 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 and, and she was just another instrument in the, in, in the instrumental. That's incredible. Tori performed two complete takes, the second more emotional than the first. But when David Gilmore asked for a third take, she stopped halfway through, feeling that she was becoming repetitive and had already done the best she could. I respect that. I like that. I love everything about this song. The story, everything. The final album track was assembled from all three takes. The members of the band were deeply impressed by Tori's performance but did not tell her this and she left the studio with the standard not thirty dollars but thirty something flat for, uh flat fee under the impression that her vocals would not make the final cut she only became aware that she had been included in the final mix when she had picked up the album at a local record store and saw her name in the credits in 2005, an undisclosed out-of-court settlement in Tori's favor included giving her vocal composition credit. See, I don't like that. Y'all know I don't like that, man. I do not like that. Y'all know it's nothing more than I hate. Out of all the things that happen in the music industry, I hate when record labels destroy or input themselves where they're not needed. That's probably the my number one pet peeve in the music industry. The second is royalties and credit. Credit your people. Always. Always. And give them their just due. Now clearly, the way it sounded, she didn't have... She had, she had the $30 or whatever fee for a time. But you know, once somebody's a part of one of the biggest albums ever made, you gotta pay them. Like, that's like Michael Jackson not paying Quincy Jones for Thriller or something. Like, like you can't, you cannot do that. You gotta pay people. You have to. And the fact that they're saying, like, now I don't know who, who wrote this, but I'm going to assume it came from a reliable source. The fact that they are up front saying, yeah, we purposely did. See, it's one thing if you don't pay somebody because you're an upcoming, you're an up and coming band or group or artist. You don't have the funds to pay for this person. And so you kind of just stall and stall until you can pay them on the back end or something. But to say, yo, we knew we were going to keep this and we had full intentions on not paying this person. I just, I hate stories like that. I hate it. I hate it. For a performance like that, I would have I would have paid her no problem. And I would assume Pink Floyd had the money. Uh, let me not assume. I don't know. But I hate I hate stories like that. I hate it. I hate it. This was incredible. Between the p, I mean, the song is really just the piano and, and Carrie singing. I mean, not Carrie, Claire singing. That's all it needed. This song is amazing. It, it, it's really nothing to say. You heard what you heard. You liked it or like it, and. 
I, I don't see how you would have anything negative to say. If you heard what I heard, that was incredible. Period. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. I, I, I got to go and get ready for work. But it's really nothing for me to analyze and say. I don't want to do song research. I just, it's nothing for me to say. If you heard what I heard, that's it. That, it nothing needs to be said. I, I'm going to just end it right here. Thank y'all for watching. As always, like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate y'all for watching. Until next time with Pink Floyd. Peace.